Tools. Um, so today's agenda, we are going to learn about data collection. Uh, as for any survey study, you will have adapting or adopting pre-existing instruments. I hope that you still remember that the instruments in quantitative research, uh, in surface study research design, <clears throat> we only have two, either it's a questionnaire or a test. So what I mean by pre-existing here means that you do not need to develop the questionnaire or the test by yourself. As what we have tried to find out, uh, the instruments of questionnaire or test have already been used or developed by other scholars. So in this case, we're just going to decide whether to adapt or to adopt. <clears throat> I hope that you have known as well that adapt means you need adjustment while adopt means you simply use it directly. So adopting questionnaire is when um, the reliability and the validity of the instrument has been conducted and has been achieved and has been considered to be high uh, as what you have had in your instruments, most of you have had um, quite high validity and reliability score. Thus, you may just use it or adopt it. While you also need to link your study to all other research studies that have used the same instruments, whether or not the instrument, the questionnaire, or the test that you use have already been used by other previous researchers. As for the last one is that adopting questionnaire or test seems to be very easy and save the energy because you have had it and you just use it, use it distribute the questionnaire and then the participants fill it out and you analyze it and then you did your research. That is a beautiful scenario. Yet, what happens uh, if the scenario does not work that way? Okay, um, so we call it undesirable condition. Means that, for example, the instrument that uh, was developed uh, is for university students, whereas your sample is primary pupils. <clears throat> Jadi instrumennya itu buat anak kuliah, uh, pre-existingnya itu buat anak kuliah, tapi sementara partisipan kalian itu anak SD misalnya. So different uh, types, different characteristic of participants means it's going to be undesirable. So that the next undesirable condition can be the instrument that was developed, pre-existing questionnaire-nya itu pakai bahasa Inggris, but the sample that you're going to have has limited numbers of English vocabularies. Limited numbers itu artinya less than 3,500 words. How about if your participants are um, English language education department students like you? Um, as far as we have tried to use two types, either adopting or adapting, the most effective one is adapting because most of uh, the students in English language education department of our university, um, the average vocabulary size of English is just 3,000. So even some of uh, the students have only 1,000 English words. Um, so you really need to pay attention. So don't be judgmental. Just simply because it's in English literature, or international program, then you can simply adopt the questionnaire because uh, we never know how far their English uh, are, uh, are okay. Right, the next one is maybe the number of questionnaires are extensive, more than 50 statements. This is still debatable, but um, if the number of questions are extensive, you cannot simply 
delay the questions. You cannot simply delay the domain as well because it means that you develop your own questionnaire instead of adapting it. Thus, for the third condition, I do not suggest you to delay the numbers. Uh, unless it has a very strong consideration and you have consulted it a lot to your thesis supervisor. So only two undesirable conditions, number one and two, are only acceptable. So how to adapt questionnaires? Okay, what happened? Why we should adapt the questionnaires? The first one, um, <clears throat> okay. These are the uh, when, when the undesirable condition happen. So you may find the questionnaire and then you may do these three things. The first one, adapting questionnaire can be rephrasing the items into words that is understandable, that will be understood by your participants. Rephrase. And then... Um, the next one, you can do translation, translating the statements uh, or the questions because some questionnaire um, have questions, some other have only statements. And then the third one is you may contextualizing the statements or the questions. Contextualizing, for example, there are some statements in the questionnaire saying like this, I prefer pizza rather than spaghetti well in indonesia context it will be somehow difficult to imagine if your participants um, live in remote or rural area so you may if the the essence uh, is only about uh, choosing american food and italian food so you may um, contextualizing the pizza into nasi goreng, fried rice, and then the spaghetti into <clears throat> other prominent uh, types of international food, like oh, maybe burger or hot dog. So that's what is meant by contextualizing. So, okay, this is the last choice. If only uh, the variable that you are going to search, to research, uh, does not have pre-existing questionnaire, then there is no other option. You need to develop the questionnaire by yourself. But the policy in our department does not allow undergraduate students to develop their own questionnaire because it is very rigorous. So. If the variable seems to be very difficult, then you just need to exchange the change the variable. But most of your research project uh, that you have submitted are okay. You have had the pre-existing questionnaire, right? All right. So how to adapt questionnaires? Okay. The first one you need to comprehend. You need to read, read, read all the statements and the questionnaire in uh, the questions in the questionnaire. Or if it is a test, then you really need to know how um, the test is built and how the questions are okay. Are are they okay to the students? And then you really need to pay attention on how you see it. You see them differently the translated one and the original one. Will that be the same or different? Okay, and then the next one, <clears throat> after you comprehend the uh, substance of your questionnaire or test, then you need to compare the original and the adapted ones. <clears throat> um, whether or not it is understandable, whether or not um, the translation is okay, the rephrasing is okay, and then the last one, um, it should be an unanimous. Unanimous means semuanya tuh setuju, uh, banyak orang yang setuju bahwa yang sudah kalian adapt itu lebih mudah dipahami. So, intinya, adapting questionnaire itu 
the questions atau the statements itu benar-benar dipahami sama partisipan nantinya bukan malah bikin bingung atau malah tambah susah gitu so <tuh> tadi kan ada translate ya tapi ada juga yang rephrase uh, nah kalau yang rephrase the rephrasing one is um, simply you change the sentences from a sophisticated language into more daily spoken language jadi <coughs> kalian enggak yang um, misalnya ada statement kayak gini I I would rather feel I would rather feel devastating when my teacher asked me to collect and finish some reading projects gitu. Sebenarnya itu masih cukup daily able sih untuk misintan yang master graduate. Tapi kalau itu kalian kasih ke anak SMA atau anak S1 yang freshman, maybe it will sound um, ini apa ya Kak gitu. So, you may rephrase that into I feel sad. Jadi tadi I feel devastating bisa diganti I feel sad. Uh, terus when my teacher asked me to finish and collect reading project gitu. Jadi bisa di rephrase dengan I feel sad when my teacher gave me reading projects kayak gitu. Jadi nggak merubah esensi tapi uh, dia lebih daily spoken gitu. Jadi bahasanya tuh enggak high end. High end tuh bahasa Jawanya ndaki ndaki <laughs> high end sophisticated jangan ya jadi malah harus lebih sederhana. The next one kalau translate gimana? Nah kalau yang translate ini uh, satu establish expert comedy jadi kalian nerjemahin sendiri bisa atau kalian dengan supervisor. Ya jadi uh, kalian di semester ini tuh udah dianggap expert untuk mentranslate. Uh, sebuah questionnaire and then forward translation <coughs> forward to maju jadi kalau uh, forward translation tuh dari L1 ke L2 misalnya uh, questionnaire-nya bahasa Inggris kita terjemahin ke bahasa Indonesia gitu forward translation <coughs> habis forward di backward jadi habis bahasa Inggris di translate ke bahasa Indonesia di backward, di translate lagi ke bahasa Inggris dan ke bahasa Indonesia lagi jadi <tuh> uh, benar-benar bisa dipahami gitu intinya sih adapting itu challenge-nya adalah se- seberapa sederhana dan seberapa understandable gitu nah kalau udah di translate kalian perlu melakukan <tuh> pilot testing, jadi dicek dulu nah ada dua macam sih sebenarnya untuk ngecek B, apa translation sorry translated questionnaire satu bisa kalian uji coba jadi pilot testing ke minimal 10 orang nah nanti dihitung lagi validitinya tapi uh, untuk case ini tuh seringnya hmm, time consuming jadi bisa juga kalian pakai cara yang kedua yaitu bisa dengan expert judgment jadi minta tolong ke language supervisor atau language advisor untuk ngecek translation kalian nah kalau misalnya pre-existing questionnaire itu udah ada versi terjemahannya terus udah di udah dicari validity sama reliability nya ya udah berarti kalian nggak perlu translate lagi nggak perlu juga pilot testing atau ke expert judgment dia udah tinggal adopt adopting translated questionnaire gitu jadi namanya nanti nah terus uh, ini masih masih tentang translation ya yang tadi misalnya ngasih contoh jadi kayak ada backward sama forward translation tuh ada di sini terus yang dimaksud dengan expert judgment tadi bisa dengan uh, nah ini as peers yang belum pernah Uh, baca kuesionernya jadi selain nanya ke language advisor bisa juga minta temen yang belum pernah baca kuesioner itu untuk untuk uh, ngebaca aja kamu paham nggak ini maksudnya gitu 
oh ya ini aku paham gitu nah misalnya oh ada yang nggak paham ya udah kamu nggak pahamnya di sebelah mana gitu nah itu bisa disebut juga dengan uh, interview responden jadi di interview ini gimana udah paham belum gitu oh belum nih yang ini kayaknya apa sih maksudnya gitu jadi challenge nya di situ untuk translation ya nah terus kalau sudah di translate sudah oke okay, sudah uh, sudah dicek sama language advisor juga nah tinggal disiapin gitu disajikan itu istilahnya tadi tuh masaknya nah ini sekarang kita mau plating nah gimana sih cara plating uh, ready to go questionnaire itu satu ya kalian harus kasih greeting dua kasih intro sama aims of data collection ini terus ketiga ada uh, mulai statement feeling jadi yang udah mulai ngisi kuesionernya nah gimana sih caranya buat greeting greeting tuh kayak gini misalnya uh, thank you for your cooperation in this survey project this study is being done by nah kayak kemarin misalnya this study is being done by uh, Vivi from Uh, ini kan beda univ ya kalau sama univ ya udah from Vivi Septiana and uh, Dewi udah lupa namanya <laughs> and Dewi from uh, English Language Education Department WE the purpose oh ini bukan interview ya the purpose of this survey is to advance our understanding on how bla 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 nah ini kalau yang uh, researchnya Pak Lee sama Bu Arifah memang berhubungan dengan itu. Nah, kalau kalian apa aims-nya? Misalnya to map atau describe uh, the atau to bisa juga to enhance and to advance our understanding on how the motivation of atau how learning motivation, how the reading motivation or how the reading strategies gitu. Nah, terus the questions will take berapa lama kira-kira buat ngisi kuesioner ini kayak gitu ya terus contoh lain, greeting 2 uh, biasanya greeting memang langsung nyampur ya sama intro misalnya gini, dear respondents I am, misalnya I am Mudo Pratomo an English education student of WE terus who's doing research this research aims, sama ya aimsnya harus muncul semua terus uh, thank you for your participation Nah, ini misalnya ada uh, disclaimer atau notification disebutin aja bahwa untuk mengisi kuesioner ini perlu perlu technological devices gitu ya bisa pakai handphone maksudnya nggak nggak pakai kertas kan udah habis itu <tuh> aims juga bisa disebutin kayak gini Uh, ini ada kayak konsennya ya kayak gini. You may not directly benefit from this research. Jadi mungkin kalian nggak akan langsung dapat manfaat yang lang apa ya. Kalian nggak langsung dapat manfaat dari riset ini atau kalian nggak dapat manfaat secara langsung dari riset ini. Tapi we hope that your participation bla bla bla. Jadi di sini tuh kayak kalian memohon merayu sama partisipan supaya berkenan untuk mengisi kuesioner kalian. Nah, terus yang instruction itu misalnya kayak gini, please indicate your reaction to each of the following statements by adding checklist in the box. Terus make sure to respond to every statement. Nah, skalanya jangan lupa dikasih 1 tuh apa? 2 3 4 5. <tuh> Ini bisa kalian cek di Uh, profil instrumen yang sudah kalian dapat di uh, submission sebelumnya oke okay. nah kira-kira kayak gitu so thank you